My grandfather, he was a fantastic guy. He came over from Denmark when he was, I believe, 19, came with a brother, Frank, and um, he just worked like crazy. And he'd get up early in the morning and go to, the, to his blacksmith shop and um, the thing that I got such a kick out of as a kid, because I spent a lot of time with them in Lodi, was the fact that we got up in the morning, you ate something. Then you had breakfast. Then you went to work. Then you had a snack. <laughs> then you had a big dinner. <laughs> and then you had an afternoon snack. <laughs> and then you had an evening meal and then you ate something before you went to bed. <laughs> and, and I think there was a pot on the stove constantly. <laughs> there was always something cooking. It was either soup or beans or applesauce or something, but uh, it, was, it was a grand, grand time to be there. In the evening, we'd go for a ride in the car, and if he saw a piece of lumber on the road, we'd stop and pick it up and put it in the car and take it home. If you saw uh, horse droppings on the road, he had a box, he'd scoop it up and take it home, put it in the garden. Um, it was just a grand, grand time. He, he did, uh, but we weren't conscious of it. Uh, years later, um, uh, my oldest daughter, Claudia, and I went to Denmark, and we got the biggest kick out of seeing the way the people lived because it was so much like things that we did, but we didn't know that we did them because it came from the old country. And we, the minute we got there, we felt right at home, and that was ridiculous because we didn't speak the language. <laughs> And you try going into a store and you stand there and you talk to somebody and you forget that they don't understand you. <laughs> in one grocery store, the clerk wouldn't wait on us. They kept going away. And finally, one of the other customers said, they're, they're here. So then we did all the pointing <laughs> as to what we wanted. It was fun. So, but no, it, it, it was just great at school, high school, <laughs> our senior year. And um, that was the best thing that ever happened to me. We had a grand time. Uh, then when we graduated from high school, we were very conscious of becoming adults. We were adults when we graduated from high school. and. Um, there was a brand new Sears store in Santa Rosa. And so she got a job at Sears and she worked in the accounting department. And I um, can't remember the name of the machine that she worked, but it was some big thing that all these big hands bent back and forth. And um, anyway, she figured the, pa the salaries, the wages that people had. and. Um, I went to JC, and I wasn't really good at school, but I could sure play a good game of canasta, mm -hmm. card game. But uh, anyway, then I decided that I would work full time, and we, how about getting married? So on February the 14th, I went to San Francisco with my parents. And my mother and I went down on 3rd and Howard, which was a diamond district as well as being crummy, end of town. I went in, got my ring, came back. They said, you can't just have a ring. You also have to have a gift for the bride. And I said, what do I do? And they said, 
my mother said, how about a string of pearls? So I got a string of pearls and the rings. And the wedding ring, which I have here, somewhere, where's the little bloomin' thing? There, cost $6. <laughs> 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 and this one cost 30. That was a whole week's pay for my wife when she bought that. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we got married and I said, when it was, when the service, the ceremony was over, I said, you know, this is crazy. I don't feel any different about you now than I did before we got married. <laughs> and so we, we went off to have a good time. My wife said, you know, we need something more in our lives. And we all agreed. And so she's in the doctor's office and she's reading the Saturday Evening Post. And it was a story all about the Lutheran Church and how much they went for education and all of the good things in life. And we said, hey, that's for us. So when your mother was six weeks old, because we wouldn't let anybody around for six weeks. Six weeks old, we hiked off to church. And then we took confirmation classes for six months and enjoyed them, enjoyed the people in the class, uh, asked a bunch of stupid questions and got kind of stupid answers too, but anyway. But we had a grand time. and. Uh, it, it was really a marvelous experience to have that anchor uh, in our lives. Um, part of it w for me was I remembered my grandparents uh, on Friday. Everything was done on Friday because sundown Friday was the Sabbath and then they didn't do anything until Saturday night sundown. But all the big cooking was done on Friday and the house was clean, and you had people in on Saturday to eat with you. And when you sat down to eat, it was just, a, the table groaned, there was so much food on it. You always had deviled eggs, you always had pickled beets, you always had celery, you always had olives, uh, along with the meal. And uh, it, it was great. <sighs> I don't know. just. Be true to yourself, and um, uh, my wife always told me, don't double think yourself. If you make a decision, you see it through, and you don't in the middle throw up your hands and say, I can't do it, or I'm not going to do it, or whatever, but stand behind your word. Um, and I don't know if that's good advice for other people or not, but it's what I try to do. I'm Maxwell Sutton. I'm Zach Smurzel. And I'm Matt Hetrick.